Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to my Final Fantasy VIII No Leveling Walkthrough. On today's episode, we're going to actually hit the climax of our journey. Uh, we're going to start our heavy grind, and this is going to be part two of technically our heavy grind, since if you are following this guide, you have already done the card grind. You can do either or first, uh, there's no specific random order you have to do it in. So we're going to be just pretty much grinding AP, um, getting abilities unlocked for your new GF uh, Diablos, the main ones you need for right now um, that will help you along your no leveling journey is uh, encounter half and encounter none uh, he also has mug and he has a hit junction along with his um, refined magics I believe he has a status magic refine so those are definitely worth getting I'm just kind of showing y'all uh, a little, little bit on how to uh, successfully card these fish with your characters. Just, just be aware of the amount of damage you deal to them. Uh, at this level, they roughly have 300 or so life, like in just about any of your normal mobs. So. Just try not to overdo it too much. <clears throat> In between a 200 to 250 damage would uh, will get you the 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 card that you need, pretty much. Like you'll be able to easily card them if you can get between that damage. Um, I would recommend not hitting with Zell second, though. Um, I did it a couple of times at the beginning. But that was until I, I actually remembered about Zell. His uh his passive allows him to randomly crit. So every time he hits, he has a chance of uh, critting, which make him do considerably more damage. If he happens to crit one of these fish while they're not in the water anymore, which that means whenever they're actually floating in the sky, see how he just popped up. When they're in the ground, they're technically underwater, so they get a damage reduction bonus. Whenever they're up, out of water, you can pretty much hit them all out. Uh, they don't take no kind of reduction on their damage. So, if Zell would happen to get a crit, say when they're in the water, it won't do nearly as much damage as, say, if they were out of water. So if you would happen to hit him, say, with Squall, and he does 60 damage to 100 damage to the fish, they pop up, and you hit him with Zell, and Zell happens to crit him for about 200, you're going to insta-kill the fish. Not a good idea. So I normally go, the method I normally use is I'll use Zell as my starter attack. I'll attack them while they're underwater with Zell, and when they pop up, I'll hit them with Squall, then I'll card them. Now granted, sometimes they won't always card on the first time, nor the second or third time. Um, I'm not sure if it's 100% foolproof, but uh, the method that I'd use, and it's been working pretty well for me, is I give them four tries. If by the fourth time you can't card them, so let's say you try card them three times, they still don't card. On that fourth time, if you miss your card again, 100% of the time that I've tried it so far, you don't card even on the fifth time either. So normally if I get to, if I use selfie four times on the one of the fishes and they do not card, I'll normally either A, hit them one more time with squall, depending on where I'm at as far as junction wise and his attack. Remember, you do not want to really go over 300 damage if you can help it. Um, it's give or take around 300. I don't know the exact. I probably should just scan the fucker and find out. 
But maybe I'll do that whenever I get back off of my uh, little vacation thing. But you can either do it with Squall, like I said, depending on where you're at. Or push come to shove, you just attack him once with Selfie, then go back to try to court him again. Uh, Selfie's going to be your least damage dealer. She for sure probably won't be breaking 100, anywhere near 100. She'll probably do maybe anywhere from 40 to 60 damage if you're lucky. Maybe more. I might, might be giving her a little low. But it's pretty much just a rinse and repeat process. Um, I do recommend saving after every time you uh, get ability unlocked just in case you so happen to accidentally kill a fish or get XP because it can happen uh, it most definitely can happen and you don't want to be 10 15 20 battles in two abilities unlocked and without saving and then bam you end up killing the fish and then you got to start all over again so I do recommend periodically saving I'm here I'm just messing with some uh, some magic junctions uh, it's good to junction thunder to your attack elemental attack um, the reason why is because since the fish are water based they're they're extremely vulnerable to lightning or thunder magic so you'll actually be able to get more damage out so before the thunder junction I believe I was doing around 60 something ish damage with squall and I think possibly around the same maybe a little bit more 70 ish 80 ish with sail so with the the thunder uh, status junction the elemental magic junction let's see uh, let's see what our attack damage is now Zell just smacked him for 111 underground or underwater. And that's Squall's crit at 159. Now, remember again, uh, to be able to crit him, as soon as you hit them with Squall's blade, you have to tap the RB button. Same button you use for your limit break to get the perfect to hit like you gotta tap it right in the middle of the box. Same same concept with his regular attack. You can actually get a chance of critting and doing extra damage with the gun blade or basically shooting the gun blade. <clears throat> and as you can tell the your damage is dramatically increased. So you definitely have to watch with thunder attached as far as like how much damage you're dealing to these things it does make the process go faster but you do have a better chance of killing one of them than carding them so just just be on alert save uh, if you usually run this method and see without his gun blade and with them in the ground he still does like 97 squall uh, but the method that I normally run is Zell squall Cord, Zell, Squall, Cord, Rinse and Repeat, uh, if you have to, tack once with Selfie, depending on the situation. So, if you attack him with Zell and the fish doesn't come out the water, and you attack him with Squall, and you get a low number like an 80 or a 90, you can attack that same fish with Squall one more time, safely without having to worry about killing them. Um, is normally what I do. Now, you also have to watch with how much damage Zell is doing, because if Zell hits one of those 111s, 115 hits, 
you do have a chance of that fish dying from a, a second squall attack, which is why I don't really recommend ever, and, and I say this because I've experienced it, I don't recommend ever double attacking with Zell or Squall. If you need more damage, one attack with Selfie and try to card it four times in a row before thinking about hitting with Selfie again. Because trust me, by the fourth chord, nine out of ten times, you will chord them if you've hit them successively with Zell and Squall. And Zell does sometimes miss, so please just be aware, you know, keep track of who you're hitting with. Are they connecting and the amount of damage you deal to the fish? It can get a little overwhelming if you use times three. The speed, which is why I'm kind of just alliterating it you know to make sure y'all try to at least pay attention to that if you are following this guide so Diablos right here you can see I'm using mug I already have my time and you know my refines already done I'm working on mug now once mugs over with I'm gonna move to hit junction once hits junctions done if, do I move to hit I might do hit junction last I don't I either do hit junction or I'll start on the uh, encounter half encounter none so I think I still need to do that okay now I'm working on encounter half all right I have mug completed now so I just kind of skipped over a little bit right there I'm working on encounter half encounter none now so it does it does take a little time but as you can tell we're gonna be putting mug on Zell mug is an awesome ability but since we're doing a no leveling concept we're only going to be using mug in certain situations because mug is not that good if you're trying to form certain drops but we're going to mug some of these um hopefully i do it without times three so y'all can kind of see what i'm mugging from the fish i believe you mug fish fins from them nothing too great But again, I'm just kind of going over. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to add the plus uh, 20 strength to Zell, <clears throat> you can if you want to. Just be extra careful. Um, I think you can safely do the 20% and get a better chance of, of coming out with a card if by hitting them with both Zell and Squall. You know, Zell, then Squall, then Cord. I think you have a really good chance then of, of cording or getting a successful cord every time. It's not guaranteed. I can never guarantee anything because this RNG based stuff is just so random and unpredictable sometimes. And then again, sometimes they're, they can be manipulated like crazy, which is what we're going to be kind of doing later on in the game when we have to play some more cords and we're going to have to start abolishing stuff and things like that. Um, but we'll get into all that later. So now, I done skipped a little bit longer, I believe. I think I should be almost done with everything. Or I think I am done with everything. Yeah, because the only thing I really have left is like Magic Time plus 40 on, on Quizzicato. I'll get that, and I'm, I'm not too concerned on that. I got everything except for like Vit, Spirit 40 on Shiva. I'll get that in time. That's no big deal. Ifrit, I got all my refines uh, and everything. I think the only thing I got left on him is the Summon Mag the GF HP and the boost boost is really good if you use your GFs I'm not gonna be summoning my GFs a lot no point in using them siren same thing I got uh, move fine move fine is an awesome ability it allows you to find secret save points throughout the world and also like hidden draw points that you would normally not see uh, and as you can see I have everything I'm working on HP junction now uh, I just I don't really do stark side yet I'll get that done later and I got all both my encounter half, none, my time mag, and my ST mag refined. Mad Rush is a real good uh, ability as well, but it 
it's definitely not good for a no leveling because it uh, it pretty much activates protect on all three of your party members but as well as haste so you uh, or berserk i think it is so you you pretty much attack uh you have to attack so you'll most likely kill anything in, in its path so on wiki we're gonna put on the move fine and i'm probably gonna put on the spirit yeah spirit because spirit allows you to take more magical damage and we're, we need to boost that up on him that's your main character we're gonna add our magic plus 20 on selfie Just, I'm just going over everything, making sure I have all my junctions set up, everything on the learn. <clears throat> I'm not forgetting nothing. This is a lot more stressful, actually recording all this and doing it, knowing I have to upload it and getting like a viewing audience than just playing this on my own. Because I'm trying to really make sure I get everything good. Now, as you can see, I've collected a lot of cards. Um, I didn't play that many people though with low level monster cards so as you can see I only got like 30, 40, 20 of the like level 1 monsters but you need at least 30 gala. As long as you can get 30 gala you're good. Roughly 30 gala. Um, so level 1 monsters you need gala cards and cockatrice cards. Um, level 2 Grand Manus is good to get, but you're mainly looking for the Mesmerize Cord. You need at least 30, I believe, of those two. 40 is good to have, because uh, Memor uh, Mesmerize Blades come in real handy. Level 3, you need Tri-Face Cords. Now, technically, you need like 130 Tri-Face Cords, but we're not going to grind that many Tri-Face Cords. Uh, Abyss Worms, you need about 30, or 35, something like that. Uh, Torama good to have t-rex will give you your bones uh level five iron giant's good your chimera is good elastoid will give you steel pipes your marlboro for your tentacles for most of your weapons ruby dragon is real good gives you for flares uh, and your end noise is the main thing we were looking for and as you can see i have 61 60 is what you need because you need four energy crystals alone just to get uh Quistus's final ultimate weapon and you need two to make 20 pulse ammo uh, because you can refine one energy crystal into 10 pulse ammo i believe and there is a way to get pulse ammo in the game, I, I believe, or there's a chance of collecting a few pulse ammo. So if you can get your hands on some pulse ammo, only one energy crystal is needed. Because I think it's like 12 or 14 pulse ammo needed to get uh, the lion heart. If you don't, though... Um, you will need at least two energy crystals so you can make 20. That way you can use the 12 to 14 and then you'll still have some pulse ammo later to use if you want. And pulse ammo is very OP and can come in really handy against a couple of bosses. So I'm just, I'm just getting rid of everything right now that I can. Um, later on we will be getting rid of a lot of our low level cards too just just losing them because whenever we start getting into the later on in the game and we're having to go into other regions there's a there's a region in particular that has some of the worst uh cord rules ever and it's so hard to abolish a lot of them because that place literally has just about every cord rule there is so you, you pretty much have to play them and one of them is random the random rule we will be abolishing in most of the areas because random just sucks but in that one area we do have to play with random now that is the reason why we get rid of a lot of our low level cards is so that way we'll have a better chance of just drawing nothing but our good cards 
So for your abilities, you, I just go down the line pretty much from tool, refine all the way up, or you can go from the top to bottom, whichever. Um, you see, you got 20 pulse ammo. I'm gonna go ahead and probably just make those 20 pulse ammo. If not, I might keep them. I'll probably do four for the, uh, well, no, I don't, I don't need a tournament pulse ammo. So I was just showing you all the ammos, like you got dark ammo, you have demolition ammo, you have AP ammo, which is really good ammo. Uh, AP and pulse ammo, I believe, is like your best ammo that you can get. Status refine, you know, you can get your your silences, berserks, haste, bios. We're going to be getting a lot, of, a lot of stuff from here, especially blinds. We're going to finish off the blinds. And then we're going to go ahead and get some pain. Pain is an awesome magic. With curse spikes, you need pain. So that's 30 curse spikes for pain. Uh, we got some confuses here. Confuse is really good to have, uh, especially when you go up against some of the bosses or mobs. Mystery fluids, which is essential. Meltdown is the best magic to to junction to vit and it is also a great magic to use on enemies because if i'm not mistaken it drops their um their defensive down tremendously And you need cockatrice pinions for breaks. Breaks will help you with all the humans you have to fight. Uh, that's how, that's pretty much how you get away from getting XP from humans. You cast break on a human and it turns them into stone. If you successfully turn all the mobs you're fighting into stone, it's pretty much the same effect as a card. You get no experience for the battle, but you still get AP to level up your GFs. Quake, awesome. We're going to get some Quake up in here. We already got doubles, but see how you should have plenty of Dragon Fins to get doubles. If you don't have all your doubles, you can easily get it here. Tents for Kiragos. I don't know why I passed that up and did not do that. I will be doing that on my next video for sure. Because um, Kiraga is the best to junction to uh, health, I believe. Full Live. I only got enough regen rings to really give a hundred to one character, so I'm giving that to my mage. Regen, that's why Memorized Blades is so good to get. Uh, I got everybody's getting a hundred regen. Life, I'm probably gonna switch back and forth. I, I'm yeah, I'm giving life right now to Squall, but I believe I'm gonna give life to Selfie pretty soon, so that way she can up her. Uh, magical defenses and all that and I'll show you later about that fire magic infernal fangs is real good for flares uh, but we're gonna do some fiagras fi now you can always just go to I think it's the magic stones at the beginning also gives you fiagra um, which is what you're gonna need to do uh, to finish off selfie for a hundred but it's not bad you can do it so I think as of right now, I got everything. Deaths from Chef Knives, awesome death you definitely want. Uh, there's a few bosses that you go up against that can cast death on you. So it's always good to be, um, be protected from that, you know? I'm just going to really just set up all my stuff. Um, as you can tell, like the star next to the things, because the fire, aggro, and fire, it's giving me a, an absorption type technique. So if I would ever go up against something with fire, um, I could absorb it and I think it would heal me instead of damaging me kind of stuff. I forgot to give water to uh, one of my characters. Go ahead and do that. Do the Blizzaga, and then we're gonna. 
give, I think it's the tornado, well, the, thunder, yeah, tornadoes and then th thundaras, and arrows, arrows, there we go, that's another one we gotta give, so we're gonna be giving tornado to each one, and then we're gonna give arrows, and then thundagas, thundagas, however you wanna say it. Full life is really good for health, but we're gonna use a full life for a uh, for the status element element defense, pretty much. So that way, so like life is really good for that as well. You see, it boosts everything up, and then if you add shell or protection to it as well, also boosts up all the elements. So basically, you could be taking less damage from anything which is what we're going to be doing here i put life and i believe shell to at least give yeah you get 50 percent like i'm we're literally taking 50 percent less damage from all elementals at this point and then with asuna we're pretty much getting a plus 17 percent chance of not getting any of those status effects put on us You can also attach pain to it to give you 100% on I think three different ones or add it to your attack to give out those three which is pretty cool but oh selfie right here I believe whenever we go to her So I should have Squall and Zell set up like I want. I'd forgotten I'd given life to a uh, squall and that was the only life I had I was like where's my life at because if you actually put full life and life in those two air spots you I think if I'm mistaken you get like a hundred percent immunity to every element which is just phenomenal HP should should have Kiraga right there but I didn't do it so until then I think I'm just gonna do regen since I don't have a, a spirit junction open for her I decided to give her life back. Since she's my mage, I kind of want to protect her the most. And you raise it to 70%. So you get a pretty much a 70% uh, reduction on all elements, which is fantastic. Bait is real. Like I'm wondering whether or not I should add tornado or quake to my HP, but I'm gonna do tornado because I don't have strength unlocked yet for her. 
it'll give me the most HP, so it'll work. And that'll be it on this video. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna upload anything else for probably about a week or two after the Fable uh, upload I'll do. But hopefully everybody has a great morning, a great evening, and a great night. And I will catch y'all all in about a week or two on the next video where we will make our way towards Timber. See you on the next one.